If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody around the world listening to the sound of my voice. Welcome to the weekly recap Q&A show. That's the show where I respond to emails uh, and comments, uh, hopefully in person as well as on the show. Uh, I also share links down below that accumulated on Facebook and Twitter. Those are in the description below. If that's all you're interested in, check those out. Or you can listen to the sound of my voice as you tab away and do more important things. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into actually share. I want to share some things that happened last week. Uh, the, the episode last week, the $10 budget, I shared an idea about using little army men figures as storyboard elements, like a cell phone camera, smartphone camera. Uh, people seem to like that idea. I actually might expand that into a full show because I think there's some things I didn't really touch on. But like a lot of things that happen in that t $10 budget show, or formerly the $1 budget, is I just kind of spew out a lot of ideas with uh, little items that I find on the internet or locally in the dollar store, and uh, they might develop into their own episodes. So thanks for your feedback on that. A lot of people seem to like that one. I also had a meeting, uh, my first uh, pre-production meeting with the crew, core crew, uh, producers, DP, production designer for my thesis film collection day. And speaking of that, uh, I had a really big test last week, I think I mentioned before. Uh, that was the reason I didn't have an episode in that one week, and it was my big final comprehensive exam test. I passed it, which means I can go full force on my thesis film. It also means I have no more school from the student end, as far as going to classes, taking tests, quizzes, all that kind of stuff is over for me, which has been a long haul, but I'm grateful that I'm at this point. And actually, the next time I'll be involved in a classroom environment, I will be the teacher. That'll be weird, uh, but interesting. <laughs> so at any rate, uh, if you want to have, if, if you have a question for this show, you would like me to answer, your best bet getting it on the show is to ask me a question through an email uh, sent to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. It's also possible in a YouTube comment, but not as likely because I might miss it. Uh, even though I, I sometimes have a hard time keeping, tracks, keeping track of emails as well. So things tend to fall through the cracks sometimes. Okay, first question was from is from Joshua Dawson who asks, um, Considering I'm not as tall as you, would there be a way in which I could make the frugal shoulder rig my camera so my camera would sit at normal eye level? Uh, and if you haven't seen the frugal shoulder rig video, I'm basically you know building it on kind of a U-shaped uh, rig. Actually, it's more like a U with a bar on top. Uh, for accessories, so the level of the camera is actually lower, uh, which is something I mentioned in the video that I prefer because I'm so tall. As Joshua mentions, I'm six foot seven, so I don't want my camera at eye level because then everything is a, low, a high angle shot, and I don't want that. So I built it with that design in mind. However, if you would like something higher, um, you can basically invert the whole design, which means turn it upside down and mount your camera on top so your camera handles are pointed downward on the frugal stabilizer too or any other design. A lot of shoulder rigs are built this way you know where the handles are down and lower and the camera sits on top of them versus in my case I, I created a U-shape basically and put the camera in the middle or in the original frugal sta the PVC stabilizer rig it was a cage and the camera was in the middle more or less. Uh, so that's what I would try. I haven't done this, of course, because I built it for my needs, but that's where I would start. The flash brackets are pretty cheap. Um, or if you want to build it out of PVC, you know, just think about you know putting the handles down and the camera on top versus what I did. Uh, Jason Pierce asks about the frugal floater in an email. He says, the main question I have is, where did you find the quarter inch by two inch fender washers? Not even mom and pop hardware stores have them, and I can't find less than 100 count on eBay. Um, I the last time I bought fender washers, uh, Jason was at Ace Hardware, which is of course the most expensive hardware store, uh, big box hardware store, and they were I believe thirty cents a piece. Um, however, you can find them. You should be able to find them at other big box stores. Lowe's should have them. Home Depot should have them. But even if they don't, I would go ahead and get the hundred count on eBay. I'm not sure what the deal is. I've, I think I've seen them for somewhere 15 to 20 dollars for a hundred of them, and that's not bad considering you're probably going to be using a lot of those if you're building any kind of a balancing uh, camera rig. Now, of course, I didn't use as many on the frugal floater, but uh, I ended up using them as I'm doing a redesign of the frugal floater, and I use them on the shoulder rig and other things are very handy. So it wouldn't be a bad move to go ahead and buy the eBay version if you're getting a hundred of them. Again, I'm not sure what the price is. I'm guessing 15 to $20. Uh, but you probably won't go wrong 
uh, in getting that many. If you can't find them locally, I'm real, I'm surprised you can find them if you can find them in a big store, a big box store. But if not, there's eBay is not a bad option. All right, Walter Kais, uh writing from Australia, says I watched your video on the camera jib with great interest. Uh, he says I love to use I would love to use a seven inch monitor like you showed in the 2.0 video. Try as I might, I could not find a Kobe seven inch monitor. On the internet, I found others, but the resolution was only 400 by 232 or thereabouts, which is even lower than standard definition, and the price was higher, 40 to 50 dollars. What's your Kobe monitor resolution? What model is it? Does it run on 12 volts? Where did you get it? Um, you know, I'm not sure about the monitor resolution. I'm not sure about the model number. I know it was a clearance model. My wife picked it up. It was a, a fantastic deal. She found it for 10 bucks at a local store because they were using it as a lure to get people to register for a contest to get a big screen TV. But you had to—I think you had to buy these little monitors to be eligible. I think. Uh, but at any rate, she got it for ten bucks, and it was a one-off. You know, I mean, it wasn't on the internet, so I can't refer you anywhere. Um, I think the the resolution. All these monitors are basically basically the same, and I'll leave a link to a current one. But yeah, they do run around fifty bucks. Uh, I mean, they have, they have different names. They're all—it's all the same monitor, the same electronics. They're just rebranded. Mine was Kobe. There's a higher model uh there's all different models you find these at walmart also so i'll leave a link to that uh, it does run on 12 volts i actually did a video about using a 12 volt battery that i had on ebay with it so if you're in a remote situation and you need you know power to your monitor obviously you can't plug it into the wall you can use these 12 volt batteries you can find on ebay they're like 23 dollars i think i'll leave a link to that video also those are very handy they run like four and a half hours uh, so I could just plug them right into that battery because the internal battery, at least the one that I had, maybe this is why it was $10, failed rather quickly. Um, so I have, I have to have some kind of external power source. I can't depend on the internal battery. Um, anyway, so check that link below uh, about, about that. And again, all these monitors are going to be the same. I don't think mine's any different than the ones you've been looking at. So, oh, and there was one other question. And I feel bad because it was a really good question, and I just realized that I forgot about, for, had forgotten about it. Uh, so maybe I'll post a link below to the YouTube user who left this to me in the comments about the $10 budget. Uh, and while I was talking about the Army Men uh, storyboarding idea, I had mentioned the 180 degree rule, uh, which means basically when you have two people talking, there's an imaginary line uh, between them. If you were to see them from the top, you know, it would connect, the line would connect them. And the idea is, is that your camera, whatever camera angle you get, you don't cross that line, you don't go beyond it. Uh, because when you're editing, as you're probably used to seeing in a conversation in a movie, for example, you've got a two shot of the people, typically, and then when you cut to a close up, they, in, you know, it's an over the shoulder shot, or it's a close up, and when you cut between them, they're both looking off camera or out of the frame, and what looks like they're look, they're talking to each other. So you've got one person looking left to right, and the other person looking right to left. And when you cut it together, it looks like they're looking at each other. Um, now, if you are shooting that same exact thing and you move beyond the line, and you try editing it, it's not going to look like they're looking at each other. They're actually they actually could end up looking at the same direction. So you've got one person talking, uh, and they're left to right, and the other person is also looking left to right because you crossed the line. You went across the axis sometimes it's called so it's just a continuity rule uh, now of course you can bend or break this rule because it's it makes the viewer feel uncomfortable uh, when people aren't looking in the same direction in a conversation and it's often used to create that uh, sort of disconcerted chaotic sort of feel I've seen it in movies all the time and TV shows are doing it on purpose however if it's just a normal conversation and you don't have any sort of weird subtext you want to obey the rule because it's in, it, it makes the edit, you know, the edit's invisible, it looks normal, uh, it makes sense, the continuity is there, the people look like they're talking to each other. So it is an important rule if you want to maintain that. If, if, you want, if it, that's not what you want, then you can break it, but that's what is referred to as the 180 degree rule. So thank you for that question, YouTube user, and I can't remember your name, I apologize. Well, actually, I didn't print out, usually I print out all my questions, and that's one that I forgot, but it was a really good question. Um, something that everyone should know about if you don't know about it already. So I think I'll go ahead and leave a link below to that YouTube user because it was a really good question. Um, okay, so the question this week for this show is what are you using as a remote monitor? Uh, I was brought up that I was using the Kobe 
seven inch monitor it's an SD monitor but what else I was I'd be curious to see or hear about what you guys are using are you using standard definition using those little cheap backup monitor uh, backup screens that people use for they're supposed to use for the rear instead of a rear view mirror you have a rear camera and those are these little monitors there's high definition monitors the lily put monitors a big one people seem to like I don't know there's the small HD there's all kinds um, please tell me let me know let everyone know what you guys are using obviously we're looking for frugal ideas uh, with that and if you have a question for the show feel free to email it to the frugal filmmaker at gmail.com there's also my blog the frugal filmmaker dot com or it's kind of the hub of all my content if you're interested in collection day the thesis film that I'm working on some people have asked hey how do you do a movie from start to finish well I'm doing one right now and I'm trying to document the whole process so you'll find blog posts and uh, future videos we're having auditions at the beginning of next month that's pretty exciting but our last production meeting was last week and I blogged about it so you can check that out it's also the Facebook group which is uh, 6700 members strong now I think and there's always lots of topics and conversation about saving money uh, with on filmmaking uh, lots of knowledgeable people there much more knowledgeable than I um, who can give you advice and as well as we post deals there and any good filmmaking links is a good place there's Twitter at frugal filmmaker um, I'm trying to use that actually more as I come up with you know various thoughts about filmmaking that I need to microblog about and they're short and sweet anyway check that out or follow follow me there if you're interested and of course here on YouTube so that's the the show for this week uh, good luck with your filmmaking if you have any questions uh, let me know I'll do my best to answer you in private and also here on the show and uh, we'll see you next week